What's up guys? So today we have a very special Robbie's Reviews. I'm very happy to say that today I'm reviewing the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. That's right, the RS6 Avant. This is the first time ever that the RS6 Avant is being sold in the United States. And uh, it's a very, very special time for car guys, especially car enthusiasts who love fast wagons, fast family haulers, and uh, you know, 600 horsepower station wagons. Now for a long time, the only real offering as far as a fast wagon goes was the Mercedes AMG E63S wagon or estate. And there have been others that have come and gone over the years. The CTSV wagon that was also offered manual. And of course, now we've got the 2020 uh, Volvo V60 Polestar. But um, for the first time ever, we actually have the Audi RS6 Avant in the United States. Now, we've had other um, Audi Avants over the years. Actually, many years ago here in the United States, we did get an RS6, but it was the sedan variant and not the uh, Avant. I think it was like 2003 or something like that. But um, this is a very special car. And I can't thank my friend Michael enough for allowing me to review it. He's one of the very few lucky people down here in South Florida that has gotten their hands on an RS6. And many people haven't even been able to secure an allocation. So without further ado, let's step outside and take a look at the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. All right, guys, here she is, the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. This example is finished in the lovely Glacier White Metallic. And of course, it has the black optic and carbon optic packages. It gives you this extremely aggressive front end here with all the uh, black accenting here, the black badging. You see it says RS6 right there. And you have the large black grills going around. And you have the uh, Audi logo here in black, the four rings. And of course, down here at the bottom here in the chin, you have a nice carbon fiber front splitter. Now the first thing you notice is just how wide and absolutely aggressive this car is. It just looks monstrous. You have the vent here in the hood that feeds air to the four liter twin turbo V8 that produces 590 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. And you have all your usual things like your front parking sensors, your front camera there, your radar cruise control sensors for things like active lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, autopilot, uh, autonomous driving, and uh, so on and so forth. Now coming over to the headlights here, I'll turn these on in a little bit for you guys, but I just wanted to point out that these are Audi's latest and greatest headlights. They are the LED laser matrix headlights. And there are actual lasers in the headlights, so if you look directly into them, you will damage your eyes. And just stepping back for a second, just look how wide and aggressive this thing is. This is nothing like the A6 Avant. Um, these fender flares or fender arches are absolutely crazy. They have to stuff those 22-inch wheels in there. Yes, that's 22-inch wheels. These are the largest wheels ever fitted to a factory performance car, factory sedan, whatever you want to call it. It comes with 21s as standard but these are the optional 22 inch forged wheels. And hiding behind them are the massive carbon ceramic Audi brakes. You see the carbon ceramic discs there, rotors. You have the giant red calipers. This is Audi ceramic there. Very, very nice. Now coming down the side here, the first thing you notice is yes, it is a station wagon. Like I was saying before, this is the first time ever that Audi has sold a RS6 Avant in the United States, or really an RS wagon period. There hasn't ever been any other RS wagon sold here, not the RS4, not the RS6, not any of the other ones. So it's a very, very special time for car enthusiasts. And um, as you can see, this, this angle of the car right here is just incredible. The car is so wide, you really see it here. Just nothing but hips. And some of you may have seen that I recently reviewed the SL65 Black Series. Well, just like that car compared to the regular SL65 where it has uh, very dramatized uh, fender flares, it's just very wide all around. This car is just like that compared to uh, the A6 or even the S6. And you can see they had to have special doors for the car just because it starts to flare out right uh, towards the end of the door, over to the fender, around to the bumper. And it's just really, really something to behold. Now coming to the back, Continuing with the carbon optic and black optic packages, you have the black Audi logo here on the tailgate or lift gate. You have the black RS6 badging there, and you have this trim piece that continues all the way through the taillights, through the lift gate, and around here. It's a nice gloss black. Now this car has the optional sport exhaust, but with the black optic package, you also get black oval exhaust tips. And with the carbon optic package, you get this massive carbon fiber rear diffuser going all the way across the back of the car. You have this uh, black kind of honeycomb mesh insert here. 
and just goes all the way around to have the to house the two reflectors in the corners of the bumper. Now, um, well, continuing with the back here, we're actually going to pull out the key. It's newly redesigned for 2021. Nice Audi key. It says RS on the back. And uh, similar to a lot of uh, luxury family cars, luxury performance cars too, there's usually two or three ways to open the uh, trunk or the lift gate in this case. So the first way is you have the key here. You can either press uh, twice on the key, it opens up. Also showing off those cool sequential turn signals. Lift gate goes all the way up, revealing lots of cargo space. You even th have things like hooks for your groceries. You actually have levers here that if you pull them, it'll uh, put down the seats. There's a baby seat there, so I don't wanna put this one down, but they're one way uh, power folding seats They go down. And uh, as you can see, plenty of cargo space here. I got my bags and tripod and stuff. And there's some other stuff in here. You have nice ambient lighting. And if you need it here, you have a cargo net. Pretty cool to have. It goes up like that. You can also uh, cover the whole cargo area. You have more storage nets on the side, more hooks on this side for groceries. Um, there is no spare wheel with this car for obvious reasons. The base wheel size is 21 inches and you have this uh, full exhaust system here, true dual exhaust. And uh, if we look inside there, you can actually see it is a real exhaust tip and uh, the exhaust piping ends right there and goes into the tip. So pretty cool and you can see the valves in there for the uh, sport exhaust. So um, one way you can close the lift gate is you press the little button up here and it closes down. And one more way you can open it up is down here. There's a little lever. You just press that, releases the trunk. Now a way you can both close it and open it, similar to many Mercedes-Benz and BMW models that have the option. You just swipe your foot underneath and the lift gate goes down. And it's the same thing if you want to open it, it goes up. Very, very cool. So we're going to close it for now. Just uh, continuing to walk around the side of the car here again. You notice part of the carbon optic package here is those massive side skirts that are in carbon fiber. And it's amazing just how far they come out. So if we open the back door here, you can see that you have to step over this um, side skirt, which flares out, and then over the uh, door sill here and then into the car. And as you can see, quick peek at the interior, it is the usual amazing uh, hexagonal quilted stitching from the Audi RS models. Similar to the RSQ8 that I reviewed, of course, it's a family car, got a baby seat, toys and stuff. So at the end of the day, it is a fast family hauler. And um, it's just one of those cars that really is all around perfect in every way. So funny thing, similar to the RSQ8 I reviewed, that vehicle also had the black optic and carbon optic packages. So this vehicle has the carbon optic package, so you have the carbon mirror caps. However, if it didn't have that package and it had the black optic, you would just have black mirrors. And if it doesn't have either package, you just have a body color. So in this case, it would be glacier white metallic on the uh, mirrors. And you have things like the keyless entry. So with the key in your pocket, if you just press that, car locks, hand on the back of the handle, it opens up. And there are uh, soft closed doors, you can see here. Very cool. And um, really just taking this thing in, it really, it's surreal. Um, Nobody had any idea that we were ever going to get one of these in the United States. People have been asking Audi for years to sell these in the United States. And while Mercedes admits they really don't sell that many of their AMG wagons, um, they keep them here for the true enthusiasts that love a fast wagon. Um, they do sell a lot more of their SUVs and fast SUVs. Um, I'm not really sure of the total production of the RS6 Avant. However, I can tell you that here in South Florida, um, I haven't seen any on the road. I know three people that have gotten them. Uh, this is one of them, and then the other one is also white, and then there's a, a blue one as well. However, um, this is not something you're going to see every day. And if you do get the chance to see one, and you know what it is, definitely take it in. It is a very, very special vehicle. And uh, like I was saying, something that fast wagon enthusiasts, or just car enthusiasts in general, have been wanting for years, and Audi has delivered. They answered all our prayers. and. Um, yeah, just honestly kind of speechless that I'm even standing here in front of this thing. I'm going to walk around it real quick. Got a storm brewing over there. Makes this car look even more aggressive with a storm lurking in the background.
just looks so menacing. And actually, I want to show you guys something real quick with the headlights since it's a little dark out. Although we are at a parking garage here, so I will go down below a little bit later and show you guys more of the, uh, the lighting and the ambient lighting inside. So right now, we're going to pop the hood, check out that 4 liter twin turbo V8. Got the hood pulled over here. And there you can see that gorgeous Hot V configuration twin turbo V8. Uh, it's 4 liters. And uh, the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is uh, unlike most other Audi models, and really a lot of high performance luxury vehicles in general, there isn't a lot of uh, plastic covers and stuff other than the cover that's on the engine where you see Audi logo with the RS symbol here and it says V8. Um, there's no other plastic covers. You can actually see the engine, you can see the V8 down there. And um, it's kind of funny. There's a little warning on the engine cover saying don't touch this, it could be hot. And uh, it's, it is metal and just touched it for literally half a second and burn my finger. It is definitely hot. It's good to heed that warning. So here you have the ECU in kind of an interesting location over here. I think there's a couple in this car actually. But uh, all the exposed wiring and plumbing and vents and stuff like that, I really just love that. Um, kind of gave it an old school muscle car look. You can kind of see how everything works, everything that's plugged in. There's no massive um, plastic covers like I was saying. And then down here you can get a closer look at that vent that's in the top of the bumper. You can kind of see that it goes, it feeds up into this uh, housing here. It's almost like reservoir looking thing and up into the dual intakes that feed this engine. And I'm not gonna take the cover off and this thing is extremely hot. However, the turbos lie right around here, right in the valley of the engine. So they stay nice and hot and there's virtually zero turbo lag. Honestly, it's just a blast to drive and I really can't wait to drive it more. And um, earlier when I was talking about the Matrix LED laser lights, it's pretty funny, something I've never seen on another car. You actually have a warning, it says laser radiation, do not stare into beam class 2 laser product so they're not on now but there are literal lasers in the headlights and we're going to turn them on in a second so you guys can check them out and of course we'll get the car down below into the parking garage so i can show you guys all the lighting all right so now i'm going to close it down step inside real quick and turn on the headlights and taillights as well as the hazard lights so for most of these cars you have to put on the at least the ignition all right now we have the uh, headlight controls over here, so we want to turn on front there, as well as the hazard lights. Nice ha haptic feedback button there. So the headlights are on. Step out. Of course, first, just like the RSQ8 and other modern Audi models, you have the very, very bright indicators in the mirrors. They wrap all the way around. Great visibility, especially at night. And coming around to the front, First thing you notice is those amazing LED switchback turn signals. So the part of the running light, which is white, you can see it very quickly switches to amber, almost too fast for the camera. And then of course you have the laser lighting. I'm not looking into it, don't worry. The camera is. So you have the laser lights there and they can swivel, go up and down and all kinds of things. Just really, really cool to look at from all angles. So walking around the side here to the taillights, just like the little light show you get in the front, in the back, you actually get even more. So you have the top part of the LED taillights here, which is the little sequential thing that goes across all the way to the edge of the taillight. And you have these little vertical bars here. Just a very, very cool design. Here's the passenger side. And uh, with the taillights going all the way uh, around the quarter panels, it just makes the car look that much wider and just really special. And at night, this thing has got to look awesome. So we'll definitely be sure to go down into the parking garage here where it's much darker and get some cool pictures and videos of that. You can see this whole design just lights up here in the taillight. Just looks unreal. Audi is really doing cool things with their lighting technology. And uh, there's something that was really just for safety and boring and that's no one really paid attention to before. They're just making a really cool part of these cars. So right now we're gonna step inside the RS6 and check out the interior. First, we're going to turn off the hazard lights, put the headlights back to auto. Here we have the full digital gauge cluster, Audi's MMI or virtual cockpit. So just like with the RSQ8, we have the push start button down here. So let's start it up.
Love those soft closed doors. The easy exit feature was on, so now I'm basically in Michael's uh, first memory position here. So you have the memory settings on the door for two person. Well guys, sitting here in the RS6 Avant, I gotta say that it is extremely nice in here. There is no shortage of nice materials, craftsmanship, build quality, all that. Just like in the RS Q8 that I reviewed. Um, it's virtually the same interior, very similar layout. There is a few key differences in this car, however. Um, it doesn't have the Alcantara headliner. It has kind of this like uh, netting, this cool like net look. But what I really want to point out here is this optional carbon twill uh, inlay here on the door panels. You can see it's uh, textured. It's like actual, instead of like a clear coat or some kind of covering, clear covering going over a carbon fiber trim, we actually have an exposed like twill here and carbon fiber uh, weave or pattern. It looks very nice, feels cool. Uh, you do have Alcantara here on the door panels. And just like with the RSQ8 and other RS models I've driven, like the new RS5, the 2019, you have this really, really cool like golf ball perforation stitching covering or finish here. Um, all around the steering wheel, which is not a flat bottom like the old RS5 was. How, however, I do like this like thin rimmed uh, small diameter steering wheel. It's very nice. And I really like this horn cover here. It's uh, wrapped in leather. It has the Audi logo. It looks very modern. Um, that same like golf ball like pattern or uh, finish is on the electronic shifter here. So any uh, major touch points, you have this nice finish. Just feels good. Now Alcantara on the wheel is cool usually, but uh, it does get very worn after a while, especially if you daily drive the car and you're not wearing gloves or anything like that. Um, not going to get too much into the screens here as you can watch my RSQ8 video and even the Eurus video, but I will show you just the basics. So you have your full digital gauge cluster, just like the RSQ8 and other a lot of other Audi models. And of course you have the RS logo on the bottom of the steering wheel here, but moving up, to this little button just like in the RSQ8 you have RS mode so you just press that and it takes you to this uh, kind of race car look and I just heard the exhaust valves open up we'll give it some gas so this vehicle is completely stock whereas the RSQ8 I reviewed was stage 2 had tune exhaust downpipes uh, and it looks like this car has a limiter right now of just over 3000 rpm you can see the uh, power and torque gauges over there, or meters. You have your G-meter here. If you actually hit view here on the steering wheel, it takes you to another view. Kind of minimized, you have the uh, tachometer over here. The speedometer that goes up to 200 miles an hour. You have a little graphic of the RS6 Avant. Temperatures, boost, G-meter again, your range, radio, navigation, all stuff like that. You could hit view again, it takes you back. And then you hit, if you hit RS one more time, it goes into RS2 mode. And that actually makes the car even more aggressive. The idle is a little bit higher now. And that turns off traction control and that allows you to do um, launch control, which we're going to demonstrate in a little bit. So the only real physical gauges, or not even, they're kind of like digital or little screens, are the uh, water temperature over here. And you have your gas gauge there, fuel gauge. And... Um, up here i'm actually not sure what that is i think that's for the uh the autonomous driving usually there's like a infrared lighting or cameras in there to watch your eyes and coming across the dashboard here you have more of that amazing uh like kind of 3d carbon fiber twill effect think about think of it as like open pour wood except it's carbon fiber open pour carbon fiber if that's even a thing you have the air vents that sit uh just recessed inside under the uh full leather dashboard which looks very nice going across kind of comes out here and you have more of that twill effect going around to the passenger door we have all that Alcantara red double contrast stitching and uh, just like in every other RS model you have these incredible seats they're bucket seats um, they are pretty heavily bolstered however they're very comfortable they have a massage function heating cooling power thigh extender they're just great seats you have uh, dual cup holders here a uh, cigarette lighter style outlet you have your electronic parking brake, all your modes here. We have this uh, very interesting shifter. It has uh, the park function actually on it. And you have your uh, reverse neutral, drive, sport mode. And to put it into drive, you just press this button here, pull back. And then for sport mode, you push it to the side and then you can uh, pull down to downshift, push up to upshift. 
and uh, you actually have very nice metal paddles here on the side for upshift and downshift. They put it back in the park, you just hit the P right there. And it's cool, the uh, shifter actually goes over to the left by itself and demonstrate that again. So, P, very, very cool. All right, so like I said, not gonna get too in depth into the infotainment, however, we hit home here. It takes us to the main menu here of all tabs, just like in the RSQ8, even the Urus. You have your radio, your phone apps, media, vehicle settings. You have your driver assistance, you have individual, which is Michael has set here. You have distance warning, Audi presense. You have side assist, which is blind spot monitoring. So if we turn it off, turn it back on, you can see there the uh, little uh, monitor or light lights up there. You have intersection assistant, which is pretty cool. I haven't seen that before in a car. Emergency assist, which is actually this thing up here that uh, seems to be flashing right now. I'm not sure why it's flashing, but uh, hopefully I didn't press anything. You have exit warning. Um, we turn that off. That's uh, like a lot of vehicles have now. Um, so you have your ambient lighting that's on the door. And um, if you go to open your door and the car senses either a bicyclist or a car coming or someone or a jogger, it'll actually turn on the blind spot sensor and flash the ambient lighting. So let's turn that on now and see what it does. I don't know if you saw that, but the ambient lighting actually turned red. So you do it again. Pretty cool, goes all the way down the door. I believe it does it on the other side as well. Turn it off. Pretty cool. It does it on the uh, back doors too. Very cool feature, it integrates the uh, into the ambient lighting. Now, continuing down, looks like that was the last thing, so we'll go back out. We have Audi Drive Select. So we have Comfort, RS2 mode, which we're in right now, Auto, Dynamic, go into Dynamic, changes the uh, gauges. We'll actually go into RS2 and you can actually configure your drive mode, balanced, sport, suspension, comfortable, balanced, or sport, steering, engine sound, quiet, automatic, or present. I'm not exactly sure what present means, but that is the loudest mode, I believe. Quattro with sport differential, definitely want sport, ESC, sport. So that's RS2 mode with the traction control basically off. So if we hit it again, does it one more time. And that is RS2 mode. And I love those gauges. In the RSQ8, um, there was actually a different style of gauge where it was kind of like a boomerang. You can actually see it um, in the heads up display. I'm not exactly sure if you guys can see it too well. But it's like a boomerang. But however, I love this, these two kind of like towers that go up. And you would think the uh, numbers would start like one, two, three, four, five. But it actually starts up at the top of the screen and comes down. So, very cool. Now, continuing out, let's see what else we have. RS Monitor. So this is kind of like uh, performance pages in, in uh, the Mopars or Dodges. And um, the dynamic or dynamic data or vehicle data in the Mercedes AMGs. You have your sport differential, transmission fluid, brake rotors coolant engine oil and it shows all the temps so right now it shows that all that is cold the car is not moving or driving anywhere it's actually pretty cloudy and out. it's not that hot so while the engine is uh, warm it's not hot and it's certainly not overheating brakes are not cold since the car has been moving in a couple hours sport differential is also cold pretty cool exit out of that so we have light and visibility we have exterior lighting Automatic headlights, medium, late, high beam assistant. Then you have laser lights on or off. We'll actually have to test that down in the uh, parking garage below where it's dark. You have entry, exit lighting, daytime running lights on, of course, interior lighting. Just like in the um, RSQ8, the Audi uh, A8L that I reviewed, and even, of course, the Urus, since that is Audi technology, you have all this ambient lighting. Uh, Michael has green currently, or individual. And you have surfaces, so you have all these uh, different colors you can go through. And I will demonstrate more of that once we get down below into the parking garage. For the time being, we're going to go back out. Back out again. 
And of course, you don't have to keep, keep hitting back. If you want to just go back out, you hit home. It takes you right back because it's a hotkey. You have your navigation, which is a very, very responsive map. Pinch to zoom, very, very high quality, just like an iPhone. You have your music, telephone, all that. If you go back home, you actually have your settings. Display, brightness, all your language settings, sound, entertainment, system maintenance, navigation, just all your standard stuff. Not going to get too in depth into it. And once again, coming down to the bottom screen, identical to the RSQ8, same infotainment system, Audi's MMI, multimedia interface. You have uh, basically a climate control settings. So you have your seats, you have cooled seats, which are currently on, you have your AC settings, sync, um, stuff like that, auto. And of course, you have your trash control on or off. Audi drive select down here so if you press that it brings up both things so you can actually go dynamic auto or comfort so another cool feature is if I go to navigation it actually uh, brings up the keyboard down here where the uh, AC controls are so I can just type uh, any address I want or a location or a restaurant and if I don't want to type it I can actually draw it so I thought I said zoo earlier, so now we're going to type in zoo. Pardon my horrible handwriting. Oh, oh. So it just brought up a list of zoos nearby. Pretty cool. And to exit out, you just go back home. And then it brings back the AC controls. You have your fan speed, everything like that. And uh, your home link, auto start, stop, all that stuff. And you can also turn off the display. Tap it again. Or you can just tap it and turn it on. Pretty cool. Actually, right here, I have the window sticker for the RS6. You can see 2021 RS6 Avant. You can see there all the technical stuff. 4 liter TFSI V8 engine. Quattro all-wheel drive system with sport differential. 21 inch V spoke, 10 V spoke star design wheels. All your standard uh, comfort technology. A lot is standard on this car. Panel sunroof. Bang & Olsen 3D premium sound system. Board zone climate control, heated and ventilated front RS sport seats, MMI navigation, um, safety convenience, Audi presense, all that stuff. Now to the options, we actually have uh, packages and options here. Base price or starting price is $109,000. Here we have glacier white metallic with black interior red stitching. Carbon ceramic brakes with red calipers is a whopping $9,000. Carbon optic package, $6,350. We have the carbon optic exterior trim, carbon optic exterior mirror housings. So that's the carbon mirror caps right there. Let's see what else we have. So we also have the 22 inch, five V spoke trapezoid design wheels and anthracite black. Um, executive package, $2,500. You get extended leather package, dash, armrest, sills, console, so all the full leather, extended leather you see all throughout the vehicle, it's part of this package. Very, very much worth it in my opinion. Um, you also get heated rear seats, head up display, power soft closing doors, a must have. And then you have driver assistance package. That is $2,250. You get Audi adaptive cruise control, cruise assist with active lane assist, Audi side assist, rear cross traffic alert, Audi pre-sense rear, Intersection assist, traffic sign recognition, all that stuff we saw earlier in the menu there. You have the sport exhaust, which is only a thousand bucks, definitely worth it. And probably my favorite part of the interior is this carbon twill structure inlay for only 500 bucks. And you get this amazing textured carbon fiber finish here. It's kind of a twill. It is an inlay, it is carbon fiber. However, it's just the design. It's almost like a basket weave, but it's meant to look like carbon fiber. And it goes all around the dashboard all throughout on the back doors as well and uh, of course you have that really nice frameless mirror uh, full panel roof with two sunshades very cool now just like in every other car the rear part of the panel roof is fixed however you can open the uh, actual front part pretty cool and to close it you just slide it forward Continuing on up with the roof, to turn on the map lights, there's no uh, buttons or switch. You just tap it and it turns on. Tap, turn off, tap to turn on. Very, very sensitive, very cool. Every car should have that. You have more ambient lighting. 
You have more uh, speakers for as part of that 3D amazing Bang & Olufsen sound system. And uh, usually you can see Bang & Olufsen all throughout vehicles like in BMWs and uh, some luxury pickup truck models. However, here I really don't see Bang & Olufsen anywhere. Maybe on the door speakers, I'm not really sure. There's no crazy tweeters or anything that rides out of the dashboard. It's very modern, refined, simple, understated. And uh, oh yeah, forgot to tell you guys, the actual total price of this vehicle is $132,240. So this is a fully loaded vehicle. The owner, Michael, has told me that he got every single option um, and definitely doesn't look like it's missing anything. As far as that RSQ8 I reviewed, that was also fully loaded, had all of the same options with the exception of this uh, carbon fiber twill effect here. However, fully loaded vehicle, very, very nice. Amazing, just lovely place to sit. Very, very comfortable seats. I have the cooling function on right now. Um, just everything you touch is solid. Um, even the uh, the door handles, they're not like uh, mechanical door handles, they're electronic, so you barely pull them. Door opens, and of course you have soft closed doors. Just really a lovely place to be. Like I was saying, everything you touch, just, yeah, everything feels solid. There's a NFC wireless uh, charging pad in the center console. The box is actually uh, pretty decently sized. We'll put the window sticker back in there. And something really cool I want to show you with this Quattro logo here when we get downstairs into the parking garage uh, with the ambient lighting. And uh, that's another thing. Audi has done an amazing job with the ambient lighting on this car. It's really starting with the new A8. Um, Audi really had to follow what BMW and Mercedes-Benz were doing as far as ambient lighting, making cars feel more substantial, luxurious, special and something you really just want to drive all the time. And one more thing I want to show you guys is the RS6's camera system. Just like the RSQ8 and every other Audi model that has the option, you press this button down here with the little camera logo or symbol. Camera system comes up and you have a whole host of camera options. You can actually drag this and uh, pull it across there. And you have all your uh, different views and angles. You have your top down there. Very, very cool. And if you go to 3D, you can actually see the back of the RS6 here. It's actually a pretty cool color. And you can just drag around it, up, down, all around it. And uh, something I want to show you guys that Audi didn't have to do, but it's just an example of their amazing attention to detail. So here we have the RS6 running with the daytime running lights on. If I put the right turn signal on, it actually reflects on this uh, little graphic or model. If I put the left on, you can actually see it on the mirror as well. That is amazing. And uh, what I'm curious about is if we hit the hazard lights. Yep, hazard lights turn on. So if we spin around, you can actually see. You can actually zoom into the car too. Well, I wish we got these amber turn signals, although these don't seem to be sequential, unlike the actual car we're sitting in. Just very, very cool attention to detail. And uh, interesting to see what the car looks like without the black and carbon optic packages. But uh, yeah, it's just amazing. You can zoom out, see all around you. Turn off the hazard lights here. Just a bunch of different options. You have all your settings. You can click specific views and it'll take you to that camera view. Actually, if we go to the back view, if we hit the brakes, the actual brake lights come on. How cool is that? If we put the reverse lights on, actually can't see much there. Let's go to 3D. The actual reverse lights are on. That is, that's unreal. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people may never notice that or not even care, Just, but uh, I find that hilarious and just awesome that Audi actually added that in. And something else that's pretty cool with the camera system that is also in the 2020 A8L that I reviewed, if you put the car into reverse, the actual camera will move or swivel. It's really cool. Same thing if you put it into drive you get the front camera and the front swivels go back into reverse the rear camera is swiveling right now really really cool feature all right guys so right now we're going to get some startup and rev clips and as well as launch control of the rs6 avant now we're going to take it downstairs and show you guys the ambient lighting as well as those amazing LED matrix laser lights.
Okay, so down here in the lower level of the parking garage that I'm doing the review at, came down here to uh, really show you guys what the ambient lighting looks like. And um, I was talking earlier about that Quattro logo or badge here. It was actually lit up in the ambient lighting color that Michael has chosen. So if we simply go to vehicle and uh, go back out, interior lighting, he has individual here. So if we go to surfaces, colors, we have all these different colors we can choose from. I'll leave it on the one that Michael chose. We can have footwell on or off. Brightness all the way, it's all the way up. And if we go to lines, we can also go colors. And the lines actually are these little accents here. So we can do red, which is really cool. Go back to that green. And then brightness as well, which is all the way up. Now the kind of canned mode, similar to what's in Mercedes Benz and BMW models. Start at the top, we have contour, which is uh, kind of this white, purplish white, cool white vision, which is uh, kind of a washed out orange. Not really a fan of that one. Solar, which is a nice orange. Impulse, which is red, probably my favorite. Very, very nice. Goes around the back. And then we have Maritime, which is this really, really cool blue. Goes all the way around here, all the way through the footwells. Oh, and similar to both the RSQ8 and the A8L, the seatbelts light up so you could find them, as well as in the back. Not sure if you guys can see that. But the seatbelt buckles are actually illuminated so you can find them at night. I know that's a pain in the butt sometimes. Continuing on with the ambient lighting, we have Caribbean, which is kind of like this uh, cyan or uh, Tiffany blue color, Audi Drive Select. So right now we're in RS2 mode. It chose uh, red. Now let's see if we go to comfort. It goes into this like yellow color. I don't really like that. We're actually going to go back into RS2 mode. And the ambient lighting color goes back to red there. It's pretty cool. We'll go back to individual. This is the green color that Michael has chosen, which is actually really, really nice. Suits the interior. Makes it look like a spaceship in here. Just looks really uh, completes this otherwise very, very special interior. Goes all the way down. As you can see down on the floor there, and the footwells, and you have other ambient lighting. Really just everywhere. All the buttons are lit up. You can actually see the uh, heads up display. Pretty cool. So it looks like the brightness on the heads up display is down. I'm going to turn that up real quick just so you guys can see it. Turn the brightness all the way. You guys can see that a little bit better. There's the heads up display. Pretty cool. And we have the height as well. You can actually move the height up. Up or down. Pretty cool. Turn the brightness back down. And um, that's pretty much it as far as the interior goes of the RS6 Avant. Just an amazing place to be. Very serene, luxurious, quiet when you want it to be. But honestly, Audi just did an incredible job with this car. And uh, would definitely be an awesome car to drive every day. Michael is one lucky person. So one more cool little touch that Audi did was uh, if you open the front doors here, you actually have the puddle lights that say Audi Sport that project onto the ground with the uh, RS6 logo there on the sill plate that lights up as well as that amazing ambient lighting. But if you close the front doors, open the back, you actually have the same puddle light that projects down onto the ground there. Very, very cool. Just love that interior. The lighting on this car is just unreal. Actually, one last thing I do want to show you guys. If we uh, turn the car off here, So earlier when I was talking about the little dance that the headlights and taillights do when you unlock the vehicle and lock it. So if we lock it here, so if we unlock it, you can see just like the RSQ8, the headlights do a little dance when you unlock the vehicle. So if we lock it, do it one more time, unlock. That is just so cool. 
And uh, the back actually does the same thing. So if we walk around to the back, got the key here, press unlock. Doesn't get any cooler than that. So after turning off the car, you see the headlights, the laser lights are still on along with the uh, vertical bars there. So if you give them a second, they'll actually do the little dance in reverse and turn off. Very, very cool. So after locking the vehicle, coming around to the back again, let's see that dance one more time. And one more time, because it's just so awesome. Can't get enough of that. All right, guys, so right now we're going to take the RS6 Avant out on the road and see what it's like to drive. All right, guys, driving the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. Once again, thank you to my friend Michael for lending me the car for the day so I can get my take on it. Um, and this being the first ever RS6 Avant sold in the United States, this is a pretty special first drive, I would say. Right now, I'm just driving around in Miami, uh, sitting in some traffic right now. I have it in comfort mode. The exhaust flaps are closed. I have the cooled seats going as well as the massaging seats. Um, and honestly, couldn't be more comfortable. Yet, what's lurking under the hood is a near 600 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque, fire-breathing four-liter twin-turbo V8 that uh, really comes alive when you plant your right foot. Um, and it just really becomes something else. And I know I say this a lot, I said it about the RSQ8 and several other cars I've reviewed. This car really has a Jekyll and Hyde mentality or personality. Uh, one moment it's very docile, quiet, comfortable, luxurious, and the next it's a full-on, basically race car with a baby seat in the back. And right now I've got in comfort, I'm going to drop it down into RS1 mode. And uh, you hear the exhaust flaps open there. Trash control is still on, sitting a little bit of traffic here. Uh, transmission never gets confused about what gear it should be in. It always knows when to downshift and upshift. Uh, the rear wheel steering feels great. It makes the car feel very lively. Actually, we'll get the little side street here. Put it into RS2 mode. That just turned off traction control, made the uh, idle a little bit more aggressive in the RPMs. We're gonna plant it here. Downshifts in RS2 mode are very snappy, uh, responsive. The car just feels super tight. The car does have adaptive air suspension. However, um, honestly feels like it has full on coilovers right now. I'm gonna turn it right here. I'm gonna find somewhere real quick to do launch control. I did one earlier and I think the zero to 60 I got was around 3.5, 3.6 seconds, something like that. See if I can turn around right here. The turning radius with rear wheel steering is absolutely amazing. We're going to I think right here will work. So foot hard on the brake. So this thing just rockets to 60 and I'm not sure how fast that was, but uh, definitely feels substantial. It feels like you're in something that is just ready to go. And um, while it seems like it might be a handful, uh, especially when doing the launch like I just did, the Quattro all-wheel drive system uh, always has control of the situation. It never loses grip. As you can see, it really pushes you into the back of your seat. Uh, 
honestly at a loss for words. I, uh, when I saw that this car was coming out and getting released in the United States, um, I had high hopes that I would get to review one. And um, honestly, can't believe that I'm actually sitting in one right now, driving it, getting to really enjoy it. Uh, thanks to my friend Michael, he was one of the very few people down here who was able to take delivery of one of these RS6 Avants. Uh, several other people that I know actually are waiting for theirs. And a lot of other people just weren't able to get an allocation. Or if they did, it was going to be way over sticker. And um, this is a fully loaded car, as you guys saw the window sticker earlier. Uh, it is not missing a single option as far as performance, comfort, convenience, technology goes, all the creature comforts, luxury amenities that you could want in a um, station wagon like this that also has a powerful V8, plenty of room for your family, luggage, all kinds of cargo, makes great daily driver. Um, I don't want to call it the jack of all trades because that would mean that it's not perfect in every category. This is the perfect car. And if you're not into station wagons, there is the RS7 Sportback. Um, it's not quite a station wagon, it's more of a, uh, it is a saloon, but it's with coupe body styling, kind of like the Mercedes CLS. However, I absolutely love fast station wagons. Um, the first time I drove a E63S wagon or the S AMG wagon, um, honestly, I just fell in love. Then I got to drive a CTS V wagon. These cars really, as far as value goes, I mean, this is not a cheap car. This example I'm sitting in right now is $132,000. And that is not attainable for most people. However, if you're one of the lucky few that can actually afford this car, um, and you want a sports car, you want a race car and all that, you also want a comfortable daily driver, something you can pack up the family and the kids and just go drive um, cross country if you wanted to, this is that car. Yes, the RSQ8 is a bigger SUV. It really does everything this car does. It's just bigger, has more space. Honestly, I've never been that much of a fan of big SUVs. And while that is a particularly good looking SUV, um, the RSQ8 just doesn't have the same cool factor that this RS6 Avant has. Just, there's just something about this car. It's both in the way that it looks, the way that it drives, and just the way it makes you feel when you get behind the wheel of it. It really is just something else. And I'm just having some fun on these back roads here. See if I can find somewhere else. Do one more launch control. And launch control couldn't be easier. There's no multi-step process. You just foot on the brake in RS2 mode, plant the right foot, and then... <laughs> yeah, this thing is just brutal. And don't know what else to say. It is just a magnificent, powerful machine. So that's gonna conclude uh, this test drive of the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. And I'll say it again, if you're in the market for a car that can just do it all and do it perfectly, um, then this car is for you. Now, of course, the new AMG E63S wagon or estate is definitely uh, competition for this car. And uh, you guys know I'm a huge Benz guy through and through. But this RS6 has really, really impressed me today. And if it came down to it and I was between both the E63S wagon and this RS6 Avant, it would be a really tough choice, honestly. Right now, I'm honestly leaning more towards the Audi simply because it just looks so much more aggressive. The technology in here is unbeatable. The comfort, um, yeah, Audi knocked it out of the park, guys. All right, guys, well, that should do it for this review of the 2021 Audi RS6 Avant. Once again, I just want to thank my friend Michael, who's allowed me to take his new car out today to review it, see what it's like to drive, and just uh, get my take on what the first ever RS6 Avant to be sold in the United States is like. See you next time, guys.